OFW walk we're in the sort of like Chinatown we're going inside the Chinese Museum in Australia hello Fighter. Nice. Just this. Nice book. Millions of years before humans sat on foot, Montana was a lush, softy place. Birds. Ah, good storytelling. Yeah, this camp by the desert had beaks. Ah, look at that. Undergrowth. Dinosaurs shared the rich. I guess it's them with a mix of mammals. Well, this is what Montana used like, used to look like. Montana, USA. The forest. I told her then from the moment of then until its discovery is extremely many years later, it safely buried the skeleton and stayed directly back from the tips of its horn to the head of the stone. It was already the fossil of an asteroid he buried in the circular. Look at the land.
Once airborne, the tail and the undercarriage needed for takeoff are shed. The last time such a shape flapped its way across the skies of North America, the animals watching it were dinosaurs. You could hardly go farther than this in bringing long dead bones back to life. This is Filipino Walk. We're at the Melbourne Museum. And then part of the exhibit is this miniature gallery. I hope you're enjoying this. So miniature is one way to present a product or an idea so for example this one is an industrial crushing machine so obviously architects does this under mock building or mock houses but Made over 500 models of fruit vegetables past years in 24 years. Wow. Carefully handled infectious animal parts and create infectious models of them. All these are model makers. Wedding cake. And all the models. Today special. Snakes. These models. Rats. Very interesting. What is that? Octopus.
I love the wheeling horse. Melbourne before. Wagon. That's a look at that. First Nations, Solomon Islands, Canoe, and New Guinea. Station wagon. First time we're called along by the movie and gave us a wire ropes. Oh, Angel House. Just like in San Francisco. So we're at the museum of the old treasury and this are what are jobs in Melbourne that are not gone that are now gone due to changes in technology, economy and such. So the Buhai Sa Victoria, Australia in Melbourne around 1850s. That we're washing, we're bathing, the tub, daily chores. Meal times in the kitchen. Stove. Really cool guy. Treasury Melbourne. Yeah, interesting. A family lives in the basement as a caretaker in Melbourne, mother suing. On top of his oats, the Maynards. Named because John Maynard and his family lived in five in five rooms. Father. The old treasure building in charge of security maintenance and cleaning staff. 
Oh, interesting. So they were living inside the treasury building. Old treasury built the gold. First peoples and the gold rush. The first peoples are the original inhabitants of Australia. So they were really, they were just possessed, riding the way.
Tasmania, or Van Diemen's Land as it once was called, was colonised around 30 years before um, Melbourne, um, before John Batman in particular came to Melbourne. So Tasmania was, um, became a penal colony. Pretty much what that meant was it was an area for a lot of convicts to be dumped in to serve their time. Um, we're not talking about like, you know, a couple hundred or five thousand, we're talking about 30,000 in less than five years. Um, Tasmania was colonised quite quickly and very brutally. Um, the governor at the time made it martial law to pretty much go against colonisation. And what that meant was every single Aboriginal person became an enemy of the state. Um, that gave any free person and um, soldier right to kill them. People who, private landowners, and I use private landowners with quotation marks, um, could sell hunting licences. Um, and not hunting licences for people, well, hunting licences for people actually, not hunting licences for animals. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of Tasmanian Aboriginal people have ancestral remains in private collections in Europe. Um, bounties were also put up for a particular, particular area of um, Tasmania. Um, and in order to make sure that you were following the bounty, rightfully so, you had to prove how many Aboriginal people you killed. So it would specify a body part. So it would say right foot or left hand in order for you to get your money. One of the things that they did also, uh, which kind of sparked the belief that there are no Tasmanian Aboriginal people anymore, um, was they did what they called the black line. And what they did was they had free men and soldiers stand shoulder to shoulder with one another with weapons and they just walked north. And any Aboriginal person they saw, they tried to capture. If they couldn't capture them, they would kill them on the spot. They rounded up what they believed to be the last remaining Tasmanian Aboriginal people and sent them off onto an island to die off. The island was very was chosen to torture people, not physically, but spiritually. It was far enough that people couldn't swim back, but close enough that you could see clearly where your home was. Um, unfortunately, the two first people who were executed in Melbourne ever were two Tasmanian men, Tanaminoe and Malboihina. Um, there was a belief that all Aboriginal people, we could speak the same language, um, and so they were brought over here to try and convince um, Aboriginal people here to go along with colonisation that didn't work. Unfortunately a lot of Boonarung women were actually taken away from their country here in Victoria to become um, slaves to sealers and whalers and a lot of them ended up not making it back home. Some of them who did um, couldn't find their family at all. So the people and the founders of Melbourne, in particular John Batman, um, are the ones that actually did these atrocities. John Batman took part in the black line. And when he came over here, he wanted to do the exact same thing here. Does anyone have any questions? So, we're at the Forest Gallery. And dami po talagang exhibit itong Melbourne Museum. As far as gallery, landscape, wow, that's total learning experience. I like Melbourne Museum, crystal cavity. Wow, look at that crystal inside of granite. Wow, oh, even fishes. We're with blackfish. Australian snuff. <clears throat> Water power is getting down mountain streets. It's it. 
such great force. About 200 million years ago, continents were provided. Primitive gardens. Yeah, look at those plants. It's mossy, green plants. Rolling grass farms. It's right there. Kita niyo ba po? Iikot ko kayo rito. Living relics. Gondwanda. One of the super continents. Oh, it's only net, so malayo din siya rito, hindi siya greenhouse. Art movement. Eucalyptus tree September, October Insect. Let's see one of the you find one of the stick insects. I think it's right there. Right there. It's one of the stick insects. Looks like the green one over there. Mama gum, mana gum. It's a gum tree. Landscape of trees, which can lead to rigid timber. Tasman flax lily. So, napakalagot ko itong nabisihim na to. I think hindi mo siya uh, kulang cool isang araw to visit or exhibit. Uh, 
Open Horizons. Pasok po tayo sa display na to na yagit pa ang Melbourne. Like this with a candle. Very cold, damp place. Timbuhay nila ng bago mag 1900s. Outdoor stove. Ito yung kubeta nila. Sanitary pen. Martin Iron and Kelly. <clears throat> Kitchen. Food and eating. Little Dawn is Little Lawn is a uh, part of Melbourne. One of the old quarters in Melbourne. Illiterate the Irish born in the Bible. Twenty seven years. The eldest two have done all right. <clears throat> They're both of them married. Proper married. Church and all. Sarah? Well, you worry, don't you? And can you hear mother worries. Of course, she's had the worst of it. She was just a kid. Marie Hayes. Why are you passing Marie Hayes? There are a number of reasons why the Little On Air app is considered to be really significant from an archaeological perspective. The first thing is the size of the project. The, the proposed development was taking up about a third of a city block. In fact, the project that ended up taking place was the largest historical archaeological project. to take a new shape and a new form. South Bank is now just so vibrant. That end of the city used to be nothing, and now it's so alive and things are happening there. Melbourne, having not a lot of natural wonders itself, uh, instead, I think, is known as an event city, tennis all through summer. The MCG and football are still big. Those sorts of events can bind the city together and bring lots You can come and observe the debates whenever you wish to. You don't have to book, don't have to pay money, you can tweet, use your laptop, use old fashioned notes. There were debates this week uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. There, so. Uh, about 17 weeks in the year, this year's much shorter. Now you have Thursday and Sunday. Uh, uh, salaries are about average for most provincial farmers. You don't use, where's the gavel? No gavel. No gavel? There, so, no, no, no gavel. There we go. A common, a common question. <laughs> You have seen the mahogany wood throughout the building, there's bluestone, there's sandstone, there's marble, there's granite. When we go to Queen's Hall, I'll talk about the building. I was living in San Diego. San Diego. Much warmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big change. Below us. Um, good resource library. Uh -huh. um, because of the wealth of Victoria back in the 19th century, they could really pay for some of the best books from Europe there. So the, the archives is impressive here. The original library stock would often morph itself, would wolf, either morph itself in the National Library of Australia on the banks of Lake Burley Griffin. So it would give our stock to the new nation mm -hmm. to push them along. So, you know, a fireplace. Yeah. Different B60, stone. Yeah, different colour. So they're working their way around to sort of 
the building there, um, bring it up to scratch. The sandstone's not going to be. So enormous debate, you know, buildings were left simply to prepare for size. Welcome again to the obviously Spilvino Walk. Ito naman tayo sa museum na nasa harap natin yung relation sa mga ito. Ito natin kung ano yung ang ingay na matututunan natin ngayon today. I belong to you. The story is of us. Discover your story. We pass it to you, sir. Melbourne Immigration Museum. National Trust of Australia. It's just uh, on the website you can uh, get a free one. Have a look. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all about the history of migration to Victoria. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. sort of very interesting for a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. That's fifteen dollars. Okay. The same thing in the weekend too. It's yeah, that's right. We're all week. Okay. Thank you. Here at the end, so I'm not sure if the seven dots people who made journey here and their names are on this tribute donated uh, funds for the museum. So, whoever knows, uh, comment and share it to the group and kung sino man ang Pilipino na nakalagay yung pangalan dito sa Immigration Museum Tribute sa Melbourne, Australia share it, take a photo and share it to the group and let us know so we can acknowledge them that they were part of the Immigration Museum here in Melbourne. So yan ang museum sa harap natin. Salamat po. We're in ANZ Bank. So we can only see this because the museum is under renovation. Book of Remembrance. Hmm. Okay. It's about the the war. Diverse achiever. Let's 
See here the old part of Cat Cafe. Mm. Let's see. See the old part of Melbourne and the new. Little brick. Time and love. Guildford Lane. We hope you enjoyed the time in our green. Oasis and linger a little bit longer. Hilford Lane has recently been protected by a historic overlay. It's home to businesses, families, furry friends, and small creatures. In true Melbourne style, many of the lights are hidden treasures. The Green Oasis is here because citizens and building owners wanted to make a difference. In 2017, we joined with the City of Melbourne to create this space. Now, the residents are responsible for nurturing and maintaining our garden. Please help us protect and extend the love by being kind to one another and calling out bad behavior if necessary. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Get to Get forward. Now we know about these plants. In Garden and Guildford. Lane. There's even a rooftop garden over there. Gardens for Wildlife, City of Melbourne. That's art. Look at these walls made of rock. In sizes. Guildford Lane in Melbourne. Because we're going this way. Let's check this. Rainbow toasty. It's green and spicy. Avocado garlic pan. It's here. Another coffee shop. Short stop. IFW, we're walking inside the library of the state of Victoria. You can see it's very nice talks and lectures. Family history, you will learn a lot by being here at the library. Thank you. 
Yes. Side here. Yeah, super. That's a tag. Yeah, now there's a library. Hey, mga Kawa FW Walk. We're at the Shot Tower Museum. Let's learn about what is a Shot Tower Museum. Okay, three covered. And who is this guy? Wild animals. Okay. Boom period. So we learned that mostly the city comes alive by uh, economics. You know, economics make the settlement uh, worth it. So in this case, discovery of gold in Melbourne and also the resources that was that were here like a lot of trees okay now it's the redevelopment Kumagai Gume is a Japanese department store. A lot of it's a foreign investment. Taimaru. And it was bought by this new company. This old brick. Wow, this is the exhaust pipe. Wow, look at it, it goes up there. Shot making process.
molten lead droplets oh, okay so it was melted because there are droplets So non spherical shots run off the sides. So, uh, this is a factory in Deer Park, West Michigan. Tons of shot per week. Today, I'm going to show this now my uh, Valentine mission. More than 55 meter shots tower. Alright, so we learn. No admittance. So. This is a part of the niche munition complex. So we're gonna end our tour. Hopefully you learned something. Bye.